Imagine getting grass stopped there. Imagine that grassing me up saying I wanted to be called the sexy head. That was that was meant to be secret. How's everyone doing tonight? I was uh, what time did you spin class start that by the way? Fucking got that wrong. Um, I was in Edinburgh recently, right? We got a lot of people from Glasgow here, which is great. I was in Edinburgh like, recently, and uh, you know, I got myself wound up going on through there because I hate it. Um, <laughs> but you do you get wound up when you're through there because they've got the fucking castle, right? They've got the castle. What have we got? Did you kill Wellington statue, right? So like, from Edinburgh, like they are the most notable landmarks are 12th century world heritage site, and our most notable landmark is a piece of vandalism. Or what's worse, if you're from Glasgow, we are more proud of that fact. And there's another big difference I've noticed between sort of Edinburgh and Glasgow. Like, people in Edinburgh seem to have big houses, but fairly modest cars. Whereas in Glasgow, it's the opposite. <laughs> Smaller the house, bigger the car. I mean, growing up, I used to think that you got a free rainbow over every council house. I grew up in a place called Summerston, right? And I find it a wee bit confusing because like, we owned our own house but we didn't have much money. We didn't have Sky Television or stuff like that. But I had mates that, you know, got quad bikes for their Christmases. And they had big massive satellite dishes plastered to the side of their flats. <coughs> I got to the point I got to my mum and dad and all that. Do you think, like, one day, we could get a council house? <laughs> My mum used to say things I didn't understand, you know, like, uh, why can't you get a bear just made a peak? Because we own this house! <laughs> I thought she was playing pottery, you know. But uh, it's uh, one of those things. But excuse the gym gear, by the way, or as, you know, as we call it in Glasgow, drug dealer chic. <laughs> Actually, you've got back in at five, we're doing crops from six o'clock. The boys are texting me with an order to come up here. <laughs> 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 but that, the big drugs problem in Glasgow, isn't there? A big drugs problem, you know, a lot of needles as well. Most of Botox. <laughs> but there's, I was reading an article, right? One in five people have admitted to using cocaine in the last 12 months. Four out of five people in Glasgow have used it in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I do something much worse. I still double blazing. <laughs> so I still need to come to your house to pump on my gear. It's just it's a lot less time when I say you need to put your in. <laughs> I'll be at my door in there. It always gets funny looks from that hand, don't you? Always gets funny looks. I, uh, I used to be on television. I used to be on television. I used to be a TV presenter. And uh, that's how I start finish most conversations, regardless of the context, you know. So you had pine chips for your dinner last night? I used to be on the telly. <laughs> um, and I used to present on the shopping channels. I don't know if you've ever seen the shopping channels. And anytime you tell anyone that you're on the shopping channels, the reaction's always the same. Oh my god, was it QVC? And I have to go like that. No, it was much worse. Because <laughs> the channel I used to be on was called Great Shop TV. <laughs> And the only way I can like, describe Great right, Shop TV, right, is that it was somewhere in between Sky Box Office and Babe Station. <laughs> <laughs> but if you hit KWK, you've gone too far. <laughs> and that would be me, that would be the guy. I would be on Great Shop TV, you know, selling you something you didn't need. Price starting at six grand, coming down a fiver. A bit like selling double lazy. <laughs> Although the only difference was like I'd be there at like midnight, one in the morning, you know, we would sell mostly to like the elderly, the vulnerable. <laughs> kind of exactly like selling double lazy. <laughs> and the biggest trouble, you know, with all the shopping channels that I had, because it was all based in London, was not the fact that your soul was being sucked out because you weren't actually on Sky Sports News. 
was that people couldn't understand my accent that well. And when you're from Glasgow and you're down in London and somebody says, oh, James, I can't quite understand your accent. Your reaction's always the same, very, very calm. Hey, what are you talking about? That's fucking unbelievable, man. Racist. <laughs> and then, like, you stop for a minute and you think, there's people from Scotland that can't understand my accent. There's people from Newton Mayors that can't understand my accent. <laughs> So what they, what they did was, they said, look, we have to send you to a voice coach, right, to allow you to speak properly. And good luck with that, my mum has been trying for 20 years. But they sent me to a fairly prominent actor at the time, a guy called Nicholas Pinnock, and he's been in a lot of big things, Sky Atlantic's Fortitude, ITV's Marcella, he's in an HBO thing with 50 Cent. And at the time he was in a TV programme called Top Boy. Has anyone seen Top Boy? Woo! Yes, but I've been it. And it, it's about council estates and drug deals, you know, so it's like half a Glasgow, basically. <laughs> and it was, it was going out every week, and something happens to me whenever I'm sort of around people who are famous or almost famous. I turn into a wanker. <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to compliment my way through this. Right? I'm just going to give this guy as many compliments as I can about the programme I have never watched. So like, each week I would say, Nicholas, you were fantastic last night, top boy. And then the next week I would say, that was the best I've seen you. That was the best I've seen you. The way you do that thing with your hand and the hair and your eyes, wow, unbelievable. You just look at me. But he said to me, look, your problem is, being from Glasgow, you don't open your mouth enough. And I said, I can assure you, nobody from Glasgow has that problem. <laughs> and he said to me, and I'm going to mention it earlier, he said, because when you're from Glasgow, we don't actually pronounce our vowels because we don't open our mouth. Right? He said, you know, when you're from Glasgow, we can talk at 600 miles an hour and fucking talk like that, you know what I mean? So he said, what you have to do, you have to open your mouth and pronounce the vowel. Right? You've got to use all your muscles. You've got to say brown and round and yellow and get the cheeks moving and get your neck moving and get every sort of facial muscle that you have going like that. And I said, Nicholas, you think I'm back on the eggies? <laughs> People are already flipping through those channels at two in the morning and thinking I'm drunk. Now they'll think I'm chewing my face off. Oh, look at that, the flying pants come down, it's gone from 400 pounds, it's down to 50, get it now, otherwise you'll never see it again, except tomorrow. Um, but that, that was the most embarrassing thing of the, you know, the whole episode, because I did actually get around to watch the top boy recently, it was on Netflix, and I was absolutely shocked, because you know what, the, the guy that was bright, he was absolutely magnificent, probably one of the best actors I've ever seen, right, it was amazing. Right up until we get shot in the head, 10 minutes into the first episode. <laughs> and that is when I realised that my problem is not opening my mouth, but keeping it shut. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming down today. You guys have been wonderful.